Hello friends, welcome. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make some super simple wireframe renders in Cinema 4D. It's really pretty easy. Um, so let's get started. Alrighty, cool. So this is what you'll probably see when you open up Cinema 4D. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a sphere. Add some segments. Go to display garage shading lines. Cool. Go on to your sphere, go to coordinates, coordination, coordinates, something. I'm gonna extend this timeline by 360 frames. Go to the last frame. 360 degrees. And then hit this do a key to set a keyframe. Make these keyframes linear by right clicking and clicking linear and then you got your rotating doohickey. And um, you're gonna go to edit render settings. I made mine 2160 by 2160. We're gonna save all frames. Save as JPEG, specify your location. Sphere 2. Um, and then go to Effect, Cell Renderer, and make sure you click Edges. Then sometimes, I'm just going to save this project. Cool. So sometimes this cell renderer gets a little confused if you don't first make this object editable. So to do that, you just hit C on the keyboard and it'll make it an edit. Make the object an editable object. Um, and then you go to render, add to render queue, click yes, and bingo, bango, bongo, you got your renders, your wireframe renders going. Pretty sweet. Cool, so once you have that, you can go ahead and create a new project. Um, if you have that down, you can go to the asset browser and type in bust. Um, and then you can like bring in these face busts um, and then go into display grad shading lines and you can hit shift C on the keyboard and add a subdivision surface if you want more lines for your wireframe or less lines. It doesn't really matter to me. You can really, um, if you just hold R on the keyboard, you can rotate it. And um, so you could keyframe this animation for this bust or another really cool thing to do with this Really super cool and sweet stuff, man. This is just landscape, so C4D, you can just generate a new landscape and then adjust the parameters down here. Um, you can control the height right here. And then do the same principle, just extend the uh, timeline keyframe the rotation or keyframe really whatever you want if you want it growing or anything but that's how you create keyframes sorry for burping on the mic a little gassy today um, and then you could render this one as well so if you want to render this one out again you can do edit render settings save as a JPEG output, all frames. Um, change the height and then effect cell render with edges. and then just kind of make sure that it's framed up the way that you want. You can create a new camera. Just hit Shift-C and create a 
Uh, no, not that one. Camera. We're using an Octane camera, but it doesn't really matter what camera you use. Um, and you can zero out the coordinates if you want. Press the middle mouse button to bring up this view and bring it back so that it's smack dab in the center. Click this guy, the Octane camera. If you want it to be up a bit like isometric, you can do that. And then bingo, you can just render this one out the exact same way. Landscape. It's pretty cool. Woo. Render. Uh, to render queue. Landscape. And then press play. And cell render is extremely fast because it really doesn't need to calculate much. So you're probably going to get like close to real time on your renders if you have a decent machine. Then, all right, we'll take it a bit further. We're gonna open these bad boys in Premiere. Alrighty, so control I to import your thing. Uh, make sure you click image sequence, the little check mark check box um, and then go ahead and modify interpret footage as 24 frames per second um, so I just drag it and drop it on a timeline if you want or if you want to place it over something go for it you do you but then you can do a blur effect really any blur effect will work do like five and then I'll do a levels effect to kind of choke that blur. And just, no, levels is weird in Premiere. I'm gonna do a curves effect to choke that blur because I'm a visual guy. Um, just bring this guy all the way over until it starts looking wonky. Um, and you can control the brush stroke with the amount of blur. So that looks pretty good. And I think that's what I did for pretty much everything and then just did some uh, pretty bad graphic design to make it look a little more hip and trendy. But these are fun for like different HUD elements or really whatever you wanna do. Um, it's pretty cool.